Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us. This is Stefan Molyneux. I am your host, which I guess makes you the parasite. Wait. No. You are the kind, wonderful, gentle, and generous supporters and donors to the show. The message, I guess you could say, slightly sullied by the fact that this fine young man sent me one dollar. You know, the people who are very generous have shared with me their frustrations at the free ride nature of most of the people who listen to this philosophy show. This is Stefan Molyneux from Free Domain Radio. If you want to support the show, I strongly urge you to do so. I think it's the best chance for a virtuous future. And if not, drop philosophy, go to church, paint yourself blue, and go cheer yourself boss at some bullshit political rally. But please, get out of the goddamn way. My only uh, reservation in the business, I mean, I'm already in it, but uh, is that, you know, we charging, we're charging quite a bit to people that, um, are on the lower income scale or middle class uh, that already can't afford a lot of things. Basically, your business model is our horse has less chance of winning, so we'll pay greater odds. Uh, in other words, the greater the risk, the greater the reward needs to be to cover the cost for the bad risk. Somebody goes and leases, I don't know, some Lexus or something, they're very unlikely to abscond with the car, you know, or just sort of go off the grid. Yep. I'm not sort of trying to correlate wealth with... Um, uh, honesty and integrity, but you guys have a, a, a pretty substantial risk. And, and I mean, you'd obviously love to lower your interest payments, uh, the, the requirement, but this is the cost of having people who are not hugely reliable. And also... Oh, yeah, no, people people who talk about, you know, businesses ripping off people are just people who've never run a business. Yep. And, and the other thing, too, is people say, ah, you know, 18.5%, that's... That's exploiting the poor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the poor never exploit anyone. All your customers are honest, and they tell you if they <laughs> run into problems, and they never try and run off with cars or anything like that. They never lie. They never promise they're going to pay next month when they really know they can't. They never try to exploit you, right? Oh, no, never. But, uh, I mean... Yeah, I, I got a big, a big message to the socialists. The poor are not immu immune from being dicks. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the poor can be grasping, lying, filthy-headed, scum-sucking, false, exploitive vermin, as can the rich. It's a human failing, and, I mean, man, the, the lies that people would tell. I mean, you, you just knew it. You knew it. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I'm getting a check from my grandmother in a week and a half, so I'll... I'll do it then. And <laughs> you just know. Oh, yeah. You know the guy's on his way out to buy some weed. I mean, you, you just, you know it. And, you know, the guy's like, you phone him at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He's like, hello? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a sec. I need to clear my lungs. All right. Yeah, I got some money coming your way just about soon. Yeah, absolutely. And you know that they've been taking their gas money and they've been blowing it on Doritos. I mean, you, you know it. Oh, yeah. And they're just lying scumbags. And this, to me, is the egalitarianism. I refuse to promote any class of human beings to either devil or angel status. And having grown up around the poor... When I was... Uh... Yeah, tw about 20. Uh, I was at the National Theatre School studying acting and playwriting, and I was in a, uh, the play King Lear. I'd like to begin by introducing myself. My name is Hydrogen, and I come from a low-income neighborhood where life is not very comfortable. I've stolen many things and been involved in many altercations, most of which have ended in gunfire. I am so much stronger than you, and my powers of rhetoric so much greater than yours, 
that you could employ an army of some sort to aid in your fight with me, but I, of course, would prevail, because I am stronger than you. I'm sure I needn't remind you of my place of birth, wherein, as I explained before, the living conditions are much worse than in your aforementioned city of residence. Once again, and I think this bears repeating, I would like to restate my claim that I am in fact much stronger and have endured a larger number of hardships than you, hardships which have left me with an aggressive behavior and an imposing demeanor which I believe frightens you. The city in which you live is not nearly as difficult to live in, nor is it in such a high state of disrepair as mine. I am a superior monologist in this debate, and any claim to the contrary will result in physical violence and perhaps even death. Maybe it's growing up dirt poor. I don't know. But there's just this, there's two things. One is that I pay off my debts. And the other thing is I'll never be rich enough to buy low quality, right? You have to buy good quality stuff because replacing mm -hmm. it is really expensive. So, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not rich enough to buy low quality. And a good day to you too, sir. I would like to rebut your previous claims in an improvisational and rhythmic manner. The alleged facts you've uncovered in regards to me are unfounded and without merit. My birthplace is not only vastly inferior to yours, but my neighbors are also much more resilient. Speaking candidly, I am in no form intimidated or fearful of your actions, as I have been involved in countless altercations which have ended less than favorably. In summation, your argument denotes a lack of intellectual honesty on your part. It is my contention that this matter would best be solved with fisticuffs. I believe I will be victorious in this regard. I mean, the poor are liars of such adeptness that they make Bill Clinton look like the myth of George Washington. <laughs> I mean, they're just, a lot of them are kind of weasel bags who will, like uh, a vampire, try to turn into smoke to get through a keyhole, just attempt to wriggle out of any situation with an endless cascade of ever-escalating falsehoods. Yeah. And not all the, tr you know, not all the poor or anything like that. But generally, the honest poor don't stay poor. You know, if, if you're honest, if you're forthright, if you work hard, if you have a good attitude, well, you are almost like one in a hundred, it feels like. I mean, having had a bunch of employees over the course of my life. I mean, I had a good credit rating when I was in my teens, for God's sake. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I had jobs, had bank accounts and all that. I used to, I used to lend money to people a lot more. But uh, as Shakespeare says, neither a borrower nor a lender be. Because basically, if you lend money, you usually, if you lend money to a friend, you usually lose the money and the friendship. So they've kind of got you by the balls. They've got your property. And if they destroy the value of your property, then you're kind of in a hole. Yep. So they kind of got you by the short and curlies when they've got your property. And there's a lot of vulnerability in that. So yeah, I can say. Now, it's a good thing you're not saying where you are or the name of your company. The desire of the poor to get something for nothing is one of the reasons they stay poor, mm. right? So, I mean, in the, in the poor, you know, like, uh, I get something for nothing. And I think that's kind of like a low IQ phenomenon. Mm -hmm. They don't get that it's not free and that they are forcing other people to pay for their own thievery. They're forcing other people to pay for their own thievery. You know, your own unhealthy lifestyle choices, you now must force other people to pay for them. And it is a basic point of honor that I think requires at least an average IQ, like 100 plus. You have to at least have that, I think, to understand that it's stealing. They're forcing other people to pay for their immorality. And it is immorality. It's lying. It's fraud. It's, it's deceitful. And, uh, and it pushes costs onto other people. And, I mean, if you had an entire, entirely honorable poor clients, poor set of clients, you could probably charge five or six points and make a fairly good income, right? But because you've got all of these false, lying weasel bags, you have to charge a significant amount of money. And it really bothers me that um, the people think they can get something for nothing. This is Stefan Molyneux from Free Domain Radio. If you want to support the show, I strongly urge you to do so. I think it's the best chance for a virtuous future. One dollar. One. One dollar. <laughs> You're kind of like a thief now.
And that is not a good decision. But uh, no, the poor can be incredible dicks. The poor can be ridiculously bad money managers. In general, lower IQ is associated with poverty. You know, it's not, it's not hard to stop being poor. I mean, it may be hard for people who are not that smart, but it's really not that hard to stop being poor. You tool! You unbelievable parasitical tool. It's people like you that make people like me pay through our asses for the rest of our lives. Yeah. You predatory motherfuckers. I mean, there's no free lunch. There's no such thing as a free lunch. You don't need to be a brain surgeon to figure that one out. I mean, that's some, that's some crazy stuff right there. Oh, yeah. That is some crazy, stupid stuff. Close your eyes, cross your fingers, and hope it goes away. <laughs> right? I mean...